Hi, I'm Rocco Stano and welcome to Storymakers. Today, we're meeting Amanda Davis, who is the author of the book, 30,000 Stitches. Welcome, Amanda. Hi, Rocco. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. 30,000 is a big number and a stitch means sewing, but what is the book about? The book is about the American flag that was put up days after 9-11 um, at Ground Zero. For those of you who don't know what 9-11 is, I am going to read the first page of my book to you. On September 11th, 2001, New York City was attacked. Two planes were flown into the World Trade Center. The Twin Towers collapsed and thousands of people lost their lives. It was a tragic day in America's history. And we remember that day every year. I teach art and every year I teach about 9-11. I teach the students about it. And I was looking for a project to do um, for the 10th remembrance of 9-11. And I came across the story of the flag. And when I read the story of the flag, it was amazing um, how it was brought all around the country to be restored and repaired after it was torn and tattered at Ground Zero. And I really wanted to share that with students. And then we created our own flag, which is right behind me here. The flag behind you, how is that made? Good question. It is made with a lot of different materials. Each student was given a square piece of paper and we talked about the idea of identity. We talked about uh, what it means to be American and ideas about America. And each student uh, designed and decorated their little square to reflect some of those ideas. And then we put all of our squares together so you can see all the different ones behind me here. And we put them all together and united them like little patches like they did with the National 9-11 flag. And then we used tissue paper and we put stripes over it and the stars and made it all come together. Now you mentioned that the 9-11 flag was torn and tattered. How did it become torn and tattered? The flag became torn and tattered. It was put up at ground zero, um, which is a space where the towers collapsed. So there was a lot of destruction and rubble there. So when it was put up, it kept catching on things. And after a few days and weeks, it started getting really torn and really tattered and tired. The construction workers that were working to clean up Ground Zero decided to take it down because they didn't want it to get torn up anymore. And after that, the construction manager, so the person who was in charge of cleaning everything up at Ground Zero, took the flag and he stored it away in his shed. He kept it very, very safe. Then what happened? After the flag was stored away, disaster struck in Greensburg, Kansas. There was a tornado that came and destroyed almost all of the town. So the construction manager who was holding onto the flag decided to bring the flag down there. Once it arrived in Greensburg, Kansas, where the tornado had happened, residents of Greensburg saw the flag and they saw the condition of the flag, how torn and tattered and tired it was and they decided that they were going to stitch it back together. So they saw little glimmers of hope within the flag, glimmers of hope and strength, and they knew that they wanted to try to piece it back together. And then what happened? The flag goes on a very long trip to all 50 states. So it was decided that after it was patched back together, they wanted to restore it back to its original form, which is 13 stripes and 50 stars. So the flag went to all 50 states. So what happened in each of those states? They invited people to come and place stitches in the flag, and they took patches from the American flags within their states and use those patches to restore the flag. So people would come to these flag ceremonies and they would stitch the flag back together. Those were many, many hands that were all involved in this project. And you know, many people around the country work together to help their community. Yes, Rocco, there were many, many hands. There were hands of teachers and students and firefighters and soldiers, mothers and fathers, and people like you and me. 
And all of those hands helped restore the flag, helped place those 30,000 stitches and unite people and bring people together. Amanda, you have an activity for us. Why don't you share it? Yes, and it ties right into that idea of helping hands and working together. And the activity is actually called Helping Hands. So today we're gonna create our own helping hand. So for this activity, you are going to need either a blank piece of paper, or you can use one of the templates on my website. You're also going to need some scissors and some things to write with. I like to use a pencil and you may want some markers too. I have my trusty old Sharpie here and then I have all of my nice colored markers. I have them right here. Great, Rocco. Well, step one is actually a little bit of writing. We're gonna just take a minute to reflect on a time that we helped someone, writing down what did you do to help them and how did it make you feel? Do you wanna share what you wrote down? Yeah, I helped my neighbor with a project. Great, and how did that make you feel? It made me feel uh, needed. I wrote a similar thing. I said that I am an art teacher, so I help my students come up with ideas for their art projects. And it makes me feel really good when they can come up with something that they feel really proud of. And then step two is going to be to write down your response to how you've helped someone inside your hand. You can either write it, you can also draw it, or you can do both. And these are some examples here. So this one is a time that this person helped grandma in her garden. So they felt fun, they felt kind, and they felt happy, and then they drew out a garden. And this one here is showing a time where this person helped their brother feel better when he was crying. They gave him a hug and it made him smile. So once you're all done drawing and designing your hand, we're gonna cut it out so that we can hang it on our wall as a reminder to always lend a helping hand. I'm ready. Let's cut these hands out. Let's see our hands, Rocco. There Yay. we are. <laughs> that was a great activity. And you know what you can also do? In our comments section, please share how you help someone. Amanda, what happened to the flag? Great question, Rocco. So 50 states, thousands of hands, 30,000 stitches later, the flag returned to New York on the 10th remembrance of 9-11, and it was brought into the National 9-11 Memorial and Museum to be displayed, and that is where it resides today, as a symbol of hope and unity and it's a reminder to all of us of what we can accomplish when we listen to one another, when we work together and help one another. Well, that was a very inspiring story and I'm sure your book is just as inspiring. So Amanda, thank you so much for joining us here on KidLit TV. Thank you so much for having me, Rocco. It's been a pleasure speaking with you and chatting about 30,000 Stitches. So remember, until next time, read a book in any format.